The National Rifle Association has been one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, lobbying groups in America. The NRA is very powerful, not just because it has a lot of money, but because it has a lot of sway with single-issue pro-gun voters. It says that it has about five million members committed to gun ownership and the Second Amendment. We're all just wanting to exercise our Second Amendment rights to protect ourselves, protect our property. I love the NRA. I love the Second Amendment. They've mobilized a single issue voter on this topic up and down the entire ballot, and they've successfully done that for years. There's a shooting! There's a shooting! Jesus Christ. Oh, fuck. Gun violence in America? Yes. We need more guns. But at the peak of its power, the NRA finds itself besieged by scandals and legal challenges that threaten its very existence. Executives of the NRA are accused of looting the powerful gun rights groups to the tune of millions of dollars. Gun owners across America should be horrified by what I saw inside of the NRA. An unchecked corporation with too much power. It's fighting against attorneys general in New York, in Washington, D.C. It's fighting a legal battle um, what do I think about the NRA? Or what do I think about guns? Because it's entirely different. I think guns are fun uh, to, to shoot with, but they are still murder dildos. So they have to be absolutely, you have to be absolutely careful as fuck when you're using them. You have to demonstrate that you know how to use them. And you have to consistently keep demonstrating that you know how to use them every couple of years in a similar capacity to driver's licenses. Um, having said that, I think we should stop the manufacturing of assault uh, rifles in this country immediately because there is already way too much in fucking circulation um, and that we should do buyback programs as a matter of fact and uh, lower the number of guns that are out there in this country and make it as hard as possible to not as hard as possible but like make it a little bit harder to just fucking own a gun that you shouldn't be able to like go into a store and be like yeah I'm sane give me the fucking weapon um, give me a weapon. You should be able to get a, you should need to get a license. I don't give a fuck about the second amendment. The second amendment can suck my entire cock, by the way. Fuck the constitution. I wipe my ass with the constitution and I fucking shit all over the second amendment too. Okay. You understand? Um, you just like, if that's your argument, then I don't give a fuck, especially because the constitutional interpretation of the second amendment is drastically different now in comparison to the way we analyzed the Second Amendment or interpreted the Second Amendment throughout the history of the United States of America. The Second Amendment has never been about like, the Second Amendment is never, everyone should be able to have a fucking rocket launcher and bump stocks so you can have a fully automatic weapon uh, at your disposal. It's bullshit. Also, the NRA used to be a, a hunting organization for sport. It was originally created uh, so that you, so that Northerners wouldn't get fucking owned uh, by the Confederacy ever again by literally a New York Times journalist, okay, in the aftermath of the Civil War, literally created by Northerners. Then it turned into a hunting uh, organization. And then in the 60s and 70s, it started slowly but surely turning into a, a, a gun rights organization. And since the 90s, it has been just unhinged Republican propaganda machine. I don't give a fuck what Marx says. Marx can suck my fucking dick too. If he's so smart, he would be alive right now. But guess what? He died 200 years ago. I don't give a fuck. against its former advertising agency. There you go. That's my take on fucking Karl Marx. <laughs> Under no circumstance. Shut the fuck up, man. Stupid fucking LARPers, dude. Even the SRA agrees with me on, on gun control, so shut the fuck up. It's spending millions and millions of dollars on legal bills. There was a vicious civil war between Wayne LaPierre and Oliver North, and it was very dramatic and very expensive. It has had large-scale layoffs. And it does seem that the NRA is having a lot of trouble. 
While trouble does not necessarily mean their ultimate demise, there is no doubt that in recent years, the NRA shot itself in the foot. Oh, they're probably going to talk about exactly what I... The NRA wasn't always all-powerful, or even political, for that matter. The NRA... But why do we watch... Why do we watch... Uh... These videos when you got Hassan Abi, uh, the fountain of knowledge. Like, why, why do we even watch these videos? I'm, I'm sorry. It was formed in 1871 by two former Union soldiers. Many people in the North just didn't know how to use guns. And so the NRA's mission was to train people how to use guns in the event there's another war. It remained a non controversial gun safety organization for over a hundred years. Its earliest foray into politics can be traced back to the National Firearms Act. In he didn't mention it, but one of the dudes is literally a New York Times journalist. In 1934, this major piece of gun control legislation was actually supported by the NRA, something the NRA of today would consider heresy. It would take another five decades for the humble nonprofit to transform into a pro-gun lobby group and ardent opponent of gun regulations it is today. The NRA became a little more political starting in the 1970s and really ramped up its political efforts throughout the 80s and 90s, pushing back on any efforts by state. I wonder if they'll talk about the last time the NRA actually pushed for gun control, which was in the state of California when the Black Panthers marched on the Capitol, uh, exercising their right to bear arms in public. And then the NRA uh, turned around and, with Ronald Reagan, actually enforced gun control. Was it Malford? Was it the Malford Act? Am I, I don't want to fuck the name up. I can't remember the name now. Was it? You guys, someone in the chat should know. Yes, the Malford Act. Okay, good. States or Congress to restrict gun rights through background checks or waiting periods before guns could be purchased. From my cold, dead hands. The NRA raises its money from membership fees and donations from wealthy individuals and gun manufacturers. But it isn't just one simple nonprofit organization anymore. Along with its political transformation came a multitude of offshoot foundations for varying purposes. What we call the NRA is really a number of different organizations. It has a political spending arm and it has a charitable foundation. The organizations have to keep separate books, but they don't have to operate fully independently of one another. And indeed, they're all basically run by Wayne LaPierre, the head of the NRA. Wayne LaPierre is basically a walking, talking iteration of the National Rifle Association. He's not an avid shooter himself, but nonetheless, he's been a very effective lobbyist for gun rights and been a very effective spokesperson for the NRA. We're never going to stop fighting for your right and folks just like you all over America. Yeah, like hogs versus the guy who's selling them dog shit. Okay? Yeah. Again, it literally, for him, it has nothing to do with like the, the shooting of guns. Like for him, it's just money. That's why gun manufacturers are the real people who uh, the NRA represents. 75% of card-carrying NRA members also believe in expanding background checks on gun. Did you know that? Probably not. 90% of the entire population believes in expanding gun, uh, having universal background checks. Did you know that? I wonder why it doesn't happen. I wonder why it just simply can't happen in this country. Now, I'm not even talking about, like, widespread gun confiscation or all this other shit that, like, Beto O'Rourke was talking about. He's not going to do shit anyway. It doesn't matter. I don't, but I also don't, but I also advocate for violence. <laughs> uh, to have the right to defend themselves. I think there's somebody shooting in here. LaPierre became somewhat of a household name in 2012 
when he offered a defensive and seemingly tone-deaf response to the school massacre at Sandy Hook. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. The NRA stop killing our children. The NRA does best when it's under attack. The NRA has blood on its hands. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, here's another fun fact about gun laws and gun control and gun sales, as a matter of fact. Um, more guns were sold under the Obama administration than I believe under the George W. Bush administration. The reason for that is, of course, because gun sales spike up every time someone says, we're going to take your guns away. These, these sorts of conversations literally are good for the gun lobby. They, they love it. They love it when school shootings happen so that Democrats can turn around and say, we're going to ban guns so that then... Gun manufacturers get fucking, they do a, they, they clean out, okay? They can manufacture even more guns so that, because people buy them out everywhere you go. Same with fucking Donald Trump, by the way. Donald Trump has been pretty good for, pretty good for uh, the, the industry as well. You know, all that talk of a civil war has been really good. During the Obama administration, you had a spate of tragic mass killings in the United States, and this put the gun world on the defensive. None of it has been TOS so far, but I just don't want to risk it. When people feel that their access or their ability to obtain and keep guns is threatened, that's when they support the National Rifle Association. Oh, that's crazy. And indeed, it was boom time for both NRA membership enrollment and gun sales in America. Under the leadership of LaPierre, the NRA was credited for defeating President Obama's legislative agenda. For the record, I just want to point out that, yeah, you know, I, I say I'm a himbo all the time, but like, there are, I think, some people who legitimately believe I'm a stupid person. And, and that does frustrate me a little bit, especially because you like, wa you, you watch some fucking debates on YouTube or, you know, you learn some talking points from your fucking subreddit that you go to. Like, no. Okay. Just chill the fuck out. Like, I I'm a himbo, but I probably know more than you do. For stronger gun regulations in his second term. All in all, this was a pretty shameful day for Washington. And of course, the NRA was an early backer of the Trump campaign. The Second Amendment is so important. They're not going to take your guns away, folks. They're not going to take your guns away. Not going to do it. The NRA went to great pains to get Donald Trump elected. I'm officially announcing the NRA's endorsement of Donald Trump for president. And they were able to amass very large sums of money uh, for Donald Trump, $30 million and about $54 million for the entire election, and they were very successful. The election of Donald Trump in November 2016 seemed to signal that the NRA was at the peak of its power. High on its own success, the NRA... Hassan, I probably know more about, more than you do also, Hassan. I don't give a fuck what Karl Marx said about gun ownership. Wait, I do know what the fuck Karl Marx said about the gun ownership. Wasn't it a part of the... Uh, wasn't it part of the Gotha program where he talks about uh, how, like, there should be no effort to, basically, the working class should not be disarmed? No, I, I, I get it. It's I, I'm I was googling to give you the actual fucking quote. Hold on, but, uh, yeah, under no pretext. But that doesn't change the reality that that doesn't change the fucking. I didn't even Google it. I just I literally just wrote this. I couldn't finish my googling before. I just told you what it was, but um, just because I know something doesn't mean I agree with it. I think it's it's a silly bitch position, okay? You can say you you can you can say uh, whatever the fuck you want that doesn't change my perspective on it. Should absolutely baffle the leftists because I agree with everything Marx said. Yeah.
ventured to launch NRA TV, an ambitious online media network dedicated not only to gun culture, but to the culture wars in general. Satan hates everything good about America. So does Kaepernick. Men were made to create. They were made to conquer. Much of NRA TV was filled with uh, right-wing screeds against immigration, against journalists, against fake news, against liberals. Not all Muslims are radicalized, but all radicalized terrorists are Muslims. <laughs> Bro, imagine saying that in the United States of America. Like, like how do you get away with that? Like... Well, you get away with it because, like, according to the NRA, you literally can't be white and a, a terrorist. So that's, that's how you get away the with NRA it. NRA TV turned out to be a resounding failure. I never would have imagined these little neat pockets and hidden closures. Not that many people were watching it, and it was very expensive for the NRA to produce. The answer to the question, what the f is NRA TV, is it's just a vessel to sell America guns. That's pretty much it. Yep. NRA TV was a bad business decision for the NRA. It cost the NRA something like fucking called this too, baby. I'm telling you, the media is not easy. It's not easy business. You can't be you can't be spending all those dollars on your fucking media franchise. You can't put together a, a media operation and not hire Dan Bongino. Forty million dollars and got very very few viewers. The failure of NRA TV eventually came back to haunt them and ultimately. Tell me why assault style weapons should be banned. The facts, what facts do you have that says they're more dangerous? Every study I can find shows the AR-15s account for a tiny fraction of gun deaths in America. I love you, but this rhetoric is just wrong. No, it's, it's, it's about how easy it is to fucking kill multiple people. That's it. That's where, that's where it uh, stems from. The AR-15 ban is just about how easy it is to kill multiple people with an AR-15 in comparison to a handgun. That's all that it is. What do you mean, but no one kills multiple people with it? Yes, they do. You have zero evidence to support your claims about AR 15s, though, dude. Stop spouting this bullshit. Wait, wh what are you guys talking about? Are, are you fucking. Like, it's not just an AR 15, but assault weapons, assault rifles. It doesn't have to be fucking Armalite, but assault rifles are low recoil, have the capability of uh, having uh, as many, having like 30 fucking bullets in a magazine. And they are literally built and marketed to younger people, skinnier people, and even women. It's the gun, it's the choice gun for children and women. It's literally designed to kill multiple targets as easily as possible. Yeah, nobody killed anyone with a tank, so let's give everybody a tank. Now, the problem here is everyone says define assault rifle, okay, or define assault weapon, which was the actual fucking uh, designation that the government created when they had an assault weapons ban that was sunsetted after 10 years. You can define anything as an assault rifle. People can try to create loopholes around it and be like, well, this is just a pistol. It doesn't matter. If it's a long barrel, here, I'll, I'll just give you the actual fucking assault weapon designation directly from the bill. The Public Safety and Recreational Firearms Use Protection Act and Federal Assault Weapon Ban was a subsection of the Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act of 1994. Remember, Joe Biden. The federal law included a prohibition of the manufacture for civilian use of semi-automatic firearms that were defined as assault weapons, as well as a certain ammunition magazines that were defined as large capacity. Okay. The terminology... The terminology fits a specific designation 
or a specific type of weapon. Why is Skeletor in the background? Oh, you mean, oh, in this photo? Yeah. My fully automatic rifle can kill 30 people in 15 seconds isn't technically an assault weapon, so it shouldn't be allowed. Well, first of all, that hypothetical is great, but your fully automatic rifle is also fucking banned. So, there you go. Yes, AR-15s do not contribute to a high amount of gun deaths because people don't fucking use AR-15s to kill themselves, okay? Like, I, I get that. I know that already. That's not some, like, newfound information that you're using to own me, okay? I am, I am familiar with all of, this, all of these facts. I didn't fucking just pull it out of my ass when uh, talking about the NRA's history and shit. I don't know why you would assume that I don't know what the fucking, I don't know what the, the facts are surrounding this. I understand. That's why I said it's easy to kill multiple people with it, okay? In comparison to a fucking handgun, which is harder to shoot. You should react to Klein Nor content, right? We media loves them. Yeah, I don't like them at all. This can happen if you only demilitarize the police at the same time. Man, I, I want gun control for the police. Like, that's... I believe in demilitarizing the police. One of the arguments that these fucking morons use now is literally, well, the police need all the guns they came because everybody has a gun. It's like, bitch, well, you wanted everyone to have a gun, and now you want the fucking police to have more guns. No, we need to take guns away from the police. Okay? Absolutely. We need to demilitarize the police. Not saying that cops should not have guns at all. Please, please stop. Like, that's the silly fucking argument as well. But we absolutely do not need, like, routine traffic stops to be made by a dude with a shotgun and an AR-15 and a fucking pistol. All right? This is such an American discussion. I know, I know, I know. Every time we have this conversation, every time we have this conversation, it's just like the people that end up winning are the gun manufacturers, okay? Leftists who fucking turn around and like uh, otherwise hate this sort of shit, totally get sucked up into the NRA propaganda. It's just because you like shooting guns. It's fun. There it is. That's it. That's the only, that's the only thing. And I admit that I like shooting guns too. And literally go find, not that hard. You can find me shooting a fucking uh, Draco, a fully automatic Draco on my Instagram. It's not something I hide. I, I enjoy shooting. I think it's fun, but it's also very dangerous. Okay. I don't want to stop you from hunting. I don't want to stop you from being a safe gun owner. But if you fucking lose your shit at the thought at the, at the simple thought of, like, having to demonstrate that you're capable of shooting a gun, if that is something that freaks you the fuck out, then you're a psycho. Like, you, you just do not understand how this is supposed to work. You own a gun? Don't worry about it. That's my fucking business. Not yours. It led to the first real signs of trouble for the foundation. I see it. It was the white hoods and the burning train tracks. Okay, fine. Fair point. Now, I should warn you, this is where things get complicated. The NRA's troubles really began in October of 2017, when uh, New York State launched an investigation into an insurance product called Carry Guard, and it turned out the NRA... Assault weapons bans aren't about licensing, though. They're about banning them from anyone who is in law enforcement. Stop lying to your audience. Yeah, no, I think an assault weapons ban would be good. Like, especially if the only place where you could have a gun is, I don't know, at like a fucking uh, gun range or something. It's similar to fully automatic uh, weapons. There's a ban on it, technically. No one manufactures them for civilian use. But that doesn't change the reality that they still fucking exist. And that you can 
technically purchase one if you are willing and able to, if you have enough money. That's what I want the assault weapons to look like. That's what I want the assault weapons ban to look like. Um, and if you have a take, if you have a take around like being able to defend yourself from a tyrannical government, that's the most laughable and pathetic notion. You're not, if you don't know how to fucking operate a Black Hawk, if you don't know how to fucking overtake a forward operating base, okay, then you and your AR-15 are not getting anywhere. You understand? They will drone strike you before you even fucking think about being able to apply guerrilla tactics that like that uh that that these people that we laugh at in the fucking desert learned from the american military and literally utilized and used for years before they applied it against the american military uh later down the line okay Think about the federal government and a standing army taking down a well-regulated militia, uh, well-regulated militia forces and another army that the Confederacy put together. Think about how powerful the federal government was then, okay? And back then, it was a one-to-one, -one, pretty much. Like, the, the guns that the federal government had were very similar to the guns that you had, all right, as an individual. Now think about the arms disparity between people who have access to small arms versus the American government. And if you think like, well, look at what happened to Vietnam or look at what happened in fucking Afghanistan. Again, you don't know how to fight like they do. You're not fighting on terrain that, that uh, the American soldiers that like fucking don't know anything about that are coming in from thousands of miles away. Excuse me, I play Watch Dogs on hardest difficulty. I'm pretty sure I can handle everything. Yeah, exactly. Mandatory biannual firearm ownership courses make all non-explosives legal. What? Veterans are employed to teach and oversee course. We're never going to win this taking away currently owned firearms. I don't think you can take away uh, currently owned firearms in this stage. You should normalize, but you, you should ease into that. That's not happening now. You'd have to convince the military to act against its own people, and there are way more people with guns who know the land. Okay, dude. Yeah, no, the people with guns who know the land are certainly uh, going to be on your side. We, As we saw, the, the well-regulated militia members uh, totally cheering on the cops as they fucking put their jackboots on the throats of, of black protesters, right? Those guys are going to go against the military? Yeah. Good luck, brother. If your argument is about home defense, sure. There are certain parts of the country where you absolutely... It, it, it's normal to have a fucking gun. And it's reasonable to have a fucking gun. Especially for actual home defense. If you live in bumfuck nowhere, okay? And the next house over is like... 10 miles away, then yeah, you should have a fucking gun. I have no issue with that. If you go out hunting, you should have a gun. None of that uh, means you need to have an assault rifle, but hey, whatever. But LARPing Andes that live in like fucking Cleveland are like, oh, I need a gun. Like, uh, I need like 11 AR-15s and a 50 cal. Like, that's the funniest part. It's like, a, there are anti-material rifles that you can purchase for, like, 15 grand. That shit literally blows through, like, 11 people. What, what do you think, like, if, uh, if a Nicaraguan death squad is knocking down your door, you think they're going to do a Congo line? Is that how you're going to fucking blow through them? Like, is that, is that's the only time you're using that as home defense? You're like, hold on. 
Let me put up the fucking gun. Hold on, because you can't shoot it standing. Very difficult to shoot it standing. If the argument is they sell individual AR parts online and people assemble them, I know. I've shot a fucking ghost gun. I know. You get an 80% complete lower and you fucking weld it basically, or not weld it, but you complete it and you can basically buy every other part on the internet for uh, and, and, and assemble it like it's a goddamn Ikea table. Okay. <sighs> These guns are pretty easy to operate. How does having to prove proficiency benefit society? Not sure I understand the point behind that idea. Not arguing, genuinely asking. I think you need to demonstrate not just proficiency, but safety too. Because like a big part of gun ownership, a big part of the problems comes from accidents, injuries at home, sustained uh, with accidents, your kid having access to your gun and shooting your fucking face off. And a significant chunk of it is suicides. Anyway, um, top of the hour, every hour, six second ad break, and then continuing on this video, and we're going to finish it now. NRA didn't have the right permits under New York insurance law to be selling this insurance, and that caused the NRA to hire a new lawyer, a fellow by the name of William Brewer. He warned that the NRA was likely to be further investigated by the state of New York. Brewer suggested that the NRA conduct a full-scale internal audit to ensure their books were in order. What about the Oregon militia that got basically stood up to the state police to protect the GOP state senator? Their threat to power superseded the state monopoly? Wait, which Oregon militia are we talking about? Are we talking about the bird sanctuary? Because those guys got fucking killed. Or, and, and... They stood up to the state police to protect that GOP state senator? Dude, you're so fucking laughably brain dead. What were they trying to do? They threatened some fucking cops so that the state senator could... What, what was the bill? I can't even remember what the exact uh, deal was. Look at what happened in Michigan. That's what happens when you have a standing militia. Okay? a large part of which involved tracking the enormous expenditures incurred by their longtime PR agency, Ackerman McQueen. Among other PR services rendered during their decades-long relationship, Ackerman McQueen billed $40 million for the NRA TV project. This included a large undisclosed salary to then NRA president Oliver North, theoretically an unpaid position, for his appearances on NRA. I mean, my man is the number one gun runner, so... Not surprising that they, they uh, put him in a position of power, of course. Um, yeah, no, yeah, Europeans are probably horrified at how chud-like my entire community seems when talking about guns. It's the one issue, it's like one of those issues where like every American turns into a psychopath if adjusted to the expectations of normal human beings in like every other fucking comparable OECD nation. NRA TV. I spent my life like Americans are psychopaths for sure fair fight with he guns was making a salary of apparently over a million dollars a year and the NRA said we we need to review that contract but it's really only the tip of the iceberg it turns out that the NRA and Ackerman McQueen had profound disagreements Ackerman McQueen responded by detailing to the public that uh, Wayne LaPierre and other people who were at the head of the NRA were taking advantage of the NRA's charitable status, using it for personal expenses, such as expensive travel to the Bahamas, shopping trips in Beverly Hills, where Wayne LaPierre would spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it even came out that Wayne LaPierre had a secret $17 million golden parachute contract. 
Oliver North had been pressing the NRA's board to investigate the NRA's expenditures, including with Ackerman, McQueen, and even the NRA's law firm. In April of 2019, the NRA filed a lawsuit against Ackerman McQueen for overbilling and lack of transparency. I can't wait for the NRA to make the argument that it's ableist sweaty to have like someone who has, um, I don't know, some sort of like, uh, uh, some sort of like someone that doesn't pass like a mental health check to not be able to purchase a gun. Like that's actually ableism sweaty. I'm sure there's actually fucking idiots in my uh, chat that would make that argument as a matter of fact just days before The New Yorker dropped a bombshell report alleging corruption on a staggering scale, with a particular focus on the questionable relationship between Ackerman McQueen and the NRA. So the New York Attorney General alleges that the NRA was using Ackerman McQueen's expenses to enrich its leadership through improper spending. The New Yorker article quoted a former IRS official in charge of overseeing tax-exempt organizations as saying that the NRA had a litany of red flags that were, quote, just extraordinary. Ackerman McQueen and Oliver North have not responded to requests for comment. And in court filings, Ackerman McQueen has denied the NRA allegations. All this acrimony made for a tense annual NRA meeting the following week. Oliver North threatened Wayne LaPierre, said he would disclose information about his incredible spending with the NRA's money on personal expenses if Wayne LaPierre didn't step down from leadership of the organization. LaPierre quickly retaliated and accused North and Ackerman McQueen of trying to carry out a coup. Oliver North brought his issue to the board, but when the board meeting ended, Wayne LaPierre was still there and Oliver North was out as president. And indeed, in the months to come, Wayne LaPierre would purge uh, virtually all of the Ackerman McQueen supporters, including Chris Cox, the head of the NRA's legislative arm and lobbying arm. And before long, LaPierre was standing alone. But for LaPierre, it was a Pyrrhic victory. So the internal fight was over, but it had the effect of triggering... Like uh chuds or americans that are otherwise leftists that turn into chuds as soon as the topic of guns come up are also the same people that fucking laugh right when we watch uh who was america and like how easy it is to get nra lobbyists to literally argue on behalf of six-year-old having guns like like these people have no fucking backbone they just want everyone to have a gun they want everyone to have 10 guns 20 guns if if they could. They just want the, the gun manufacturers to make more money. Okay? And you are literally repeating their propaganda hook, line, and fucking sinker. You're Good job. Became the New York Attorney General's lawsuit against the NRA. Enter Letitia James, the new sheriff in town. So Letitia James is a Democrat, and she was elected back in 2018 to become New York's top law enforcement this, officer. This, she's awesome. James ran on a platform of challenging Donald Trump, but she was also highly critical of the NRA, which she accused of being a terrorist organization, a claim that the NRA claims is defamatory and false. But it was the revelations that came out of the Ackerman McQueen lawsuit that really provided her a basis to go after the NRA. So Attorney General James rolled up her sleeves and dug in, obtaining sworn testimony from key players, including Oliver North, and reviewing thousands of pages of documents, many of which the NRA attempted to withhold from her, especially when it came to any information pertaining to their relationship with Ackerman McQueen. But eventually, James had seen enough. It's clear that the NRA has been failing to carry out its stated mission for many, many years, and instead, has operated as a breeding ground for greed. You live in LA and hang out around glitter people, so yeah, you do want guns to be banned, LMAO. What if your house about to be robbed and your family clapped in about four minutes and the cops are going to show up in 30 minutes? Why are you arguing against something that I already accounted for where I said that, like, no, I think that having a firearm in certain circumstances for self-defense is understandable. If you live in fucking... First of all, like... The only instance where an AR-15 provides you with home defense is if you have multiple people breaking into your house and, like, trying to fucking rob you. Like, you have a trained military coming after you, like your fucking John Rambo or your John Wick. Okay? A handgun 
or a shotgun, as a matter of fact, if you don't really care about the drywall, will be way, way better than just like an AR-15 that you need. The only time you need an AR-15 is if you have multiple targets that you need to take down. Okay? Also, glitter people sounds very, uh, a little, a little homophobic. Yeah, AR is a terrible home defense. You'll likely shoot through your house into your neighbor's house. None of that shit matters. Honestly, the annual Tulsa gun show large in the USA. No, Dallas is the largest in the USA. You fucking fake Oklahoma. You fake sooner you. Of course, you're going to lie and say Tulsa is the largest in the USA when it's goddamn Dallas, you son of a bitch. Anyway, uh, no, but I have I have gone to gun shows in uh, Oklahoma in OKC, not in Tulsa. I don't think um, I'm just kidding, man. He said, what the fuck? Chill. I was just joking. I was just LARPing as a as a Oklahoma. Um, very competitive, uh, these states. Well, only for Oklahomans is, is it competitive. Texas, I don't think, really thinks about Oklahoma too much. But um, but no, I have been to gun shows. It's uh, If you want to buy swastikas... Oh, shit. Hold on. abuse and brazen illegality. The NRA has denied New York's allegations, calling the lawsuit a baseless political attack on the organization. Around the same time that New York filed its lawsuit, the District of Columbia Attorney General Carl Racine, also a Democrat, filed a separate lawsuit against the NRA and the NRA Foundation, accusing the foundation of allowing charitable funds to be used for improper purposes. On October 19, 2020, the NRA filed a response to the New York Attorney General's lawsuit asking to have the case dismissed, calling it the capstone of a partisan election interference project. It's anyone's guess when the judge will respond to the NRA's request, and this really is just the beginning of the case. What we do know is that the NRA has been hemorrhaging money on fees to combat ongoing legal battles on every imaginable front. Part of the NRA's financial situation comes from incredible legal fees. Uh, William Brewer and his law firm have been charging the NRA more than $1.3 million a month. A filing by Ackerman claims that Brewer's law firm has collected $54 million in the two years of representing the NRA. In a leaked audio recording, LaPierre told surviving board members that the NRA is in serious financial trouble. The cost that we bore was probably about a hundred million dollar hit in lost revenue in 2018 and 2019. That was back in January 2020, before the filings in New York State and DC. Not to mention the layoffs it's had to do after the coronavirus outbreak. So they can only expect to keep spending a lot more. To add insult to injury, recently ousted Joshua Powell has released a tell-all book with first-hand accounts of alleged misconduct across the board. It is an abomination of, of members' money that what's gone on over the past 30 years. It's to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars in wastage. Our break, the allegations make you seem like part of the problem, though. I understand that. He's blaming uh, his own misdeeds in many ways as uh, just part of the culture of the NRA. And indeed, it does appear increasingly likely that there was a culture of the NRA where leadership... 
I like how you said it's perfectly reasonable for recreational shooting to require going to an expensive gun range or buying 50,000 banned gun parts, $50,000 banned gun parts. Very pro working class of you. Like, what, what is your take here? That, like, if you're working class, that, like, I, I, I just don't understand. Like, what, what are you trying to say here? Like, well, I'm working class, so I should have, uh, much like all of my other working class uh, brothers and sisters, like, we should all be able to have a, as many guns as we want. Like, don't you fucking see that that's the problem? Also, I never said how expensive it was going to fucking be to get the license. Shut the fuck up. I'm sorry. I want guns to be as easy as being able to buy a Gucci purse. That's around the same price. That's what an AR-15 is. I'm working class. And I want my working class self to be able to have a Gucci purse if I want to that kills people. It's just so frustrating that like this, this understanding of guns is like, is like so fucking fundamentally flawed in the United States of America where you're like, oh, well, I'm, I'm supposed to be armed as a working class member. Like, okay, guns are still fucking expensive. Go get a handgun. Go get a shotgun. Go get a rifle that you can hunt with. I'm not saying you need to, I'm not trying to stop that. What kind of Gucci AR-15 are you buying if it costs much of a Gucci purse? It's going to be hard for me to get an RPG if I'm a working class member. I, I need to have an RPG. You just want the wealthy to have it. It's like, dude, we live in a country where 50% of the guns are owned by like fucking 2.8% of the population or something. The, the rich already have all the guns, you fucking moron. Shut the fuck up. I, nothing, nothing pressures me. Look, I'm, I come from an affluent background, okay? I'm privileged as fuck. But nothing, and I mean nothing triggers me. Like, leftist circles where people are like, huh, I'm working class, so I should be able to do this. Oh, wow, Hassan, imagine shitting on the working class this way. It's like, dude, listen, I've never met a fucking working class person that bitches like that, okay? about not being able to purchase guns in this in the same capacity and also if you're working class it doesn't absolve you from being a, having a brain dead take on a, a specific issue It's a hobby, man. It's a fucking hobby. You have a gun for a hobby. Working class people should be able to have a gun for a hobby as well. Okay? As long as they're fucking safe. 3% of Americans own 133 million guns. Yeah, they're power owners for the most part. Whenever someone says working class, they're automatically white supremacist. Man, shut the fuck up. This is a leftist... Uh, the we're having a leftist conversation here, okay? Get that lip shit out of here. No one is fucking talking about white supremacy uh, as a substitute for working class here. The majority of gun-related deaths occur via handguns, though. What's the problem with AR-15s? Oh, dude, I already talked about it earlier. Please. The AR-15s are not necessarily about, like, lowering gun violence. It's about lowering mass shootings. Especially because mass shootings... Oh, AR-15s make mass shootings easier to happen. It's just like, it's easier to kill multiple people with an AR-15. It's low recoil. It's easier to aim with, and it's easier to kill multiple targets. It's literally created to do that. I'm a really bad shot and I need AR-15 to go hunting. No, you fucking don't. No, you, you, if you're hunting with an AR-15, then you're not hunting to, like, fucking... If you're hunting with an AR-15, you're hunting to kill. You're not hunting to, like, actually uh, do something with the meat or, or anything like that. What do you mean? You're, you're hunting for... Yeah, I mean, 
surface to air missiles have less kills in the United States of America than AR 15s. Should we have that legal too? RPGs have no kills. Should it be legal, you think? RPGs have no kills on, on US soil, as far as I know. Maybe like, maybe like a training accident in the military or something, but we should make those legal too. So also, the other funny part about it is like, handguns kill way more. It's like, okay, then what are you arguing? That we should ban handguns too? Is that your take? Like, are you trying to say AR-15s don't go far enough? We should ban handguns as well? Because I think it should be difficult to fucking own a handgun too. <laughs> like, in a perfect world, no one would have guns. No one, there would be no nukes, and there would be no guns. Unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world, and there's really crazy people. The person who said, I need an AR-15 for hunting was lying. You can't. That dude who's like a long time subscriber, I'm, I know is so fucking pissed that he like probably left the community out of anger. I don't know if he's in here anymore, or if he's still talking in here, but the whole like, wow, you just want the rich to own guns is such a dumb, laughable, laughably dumb take in a country where the rich do own a lot of the fucking guns. Like most of the guns, half the guns <laughs> to be exact. basically treated the organization like a personal piggy bank. The NRA rejected Powell's allegations. So right now, the NRA is in full defense mode. This means that millions of dollars that the NRA would normally spend on lobbying and donations is being spent instead on law firms and legal fees, just at a time when they're fighting for their survival. There's no ending to this story yet. And it's far too soon for the NRA's enemies to do a victory lap. LaPierre is working hard to paint himself and the organization as the victim of vicious partisan attacks. And they think they're getting our guns. I'm just telling them, 1776 is going to kick off again. The NRA is using these existential threats to j Come on, bro. Just a bunch of, just a bunch of homies, dude. Just a bunch of working ass homies. Just normal shit, dude. Hey, look at me. Look at me and the homies just being normal, dude. Bunch of reasonable dudes. The NRA is using these existential threats to gin up support and raise the money needed to dig itself out of dire straits, beat all the cases against it, and come out stronger than ever. Although the Attorney General has sought to dissolve the NRA, that does seem like an unlikely uh, ultimate. My favorite. Come and take it. 50 cal. Anti-material rifle. Just, you can't catch me dead without it for home defense. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what I was talking about. For those of you who don't know, this gun is incredibly difficult to shoot of standing. Okay? You can do it. There's YouTube videos out there. We've watched them. Um, and as soon as I talk about how, uh, what the recoil looks like on it, or the kick on it looks like, everyone says, it's got a recoil balancer in it, actually. Shut the fuck up. It's like, dude, it's literally built to ding, like, armored personnel carriers, okay? It's not for your, it's not for your fucking house, all right? It's not even for the, for the shooting range, like, You can kill someone hiding behind a tank that's behind a house. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can use this to shoot through like fucking 40 trees. If the, 
If the fucking deer is behind 40 trees, you can use it. And then you can shoot through the deer and into the ground. Outcome from this, I think it is very possible from a mile that away. will be hit with significant fines be, and be forced to remove certain members of the board like Wayne LaPierre. Regardless of the outcome, there's a universal lesson to be learned here, as old as time itself. The NRA's downfall seems likely to come from uh, its own hubris. One of the dangers of being the most powerful political organization in America is you feel that no one can beat you. But New York Attorney General Letitia... Oh, I told you guys about my story going to the uh, Oklahoma gun show. First of all, civilian police everywhere. Like, if you want... Um, if you want to see civilian clothed ATF officers, like the place to go to is Oklahoma gun show. Okay. They're just scoping out the entire area outside. Um, secondly, if you ever want to purchase Nazi memorabilia, uh, from a uh, history enthusiast, a place to go is the Oklahoma gun show. I have never seen so much Nazi shit and so much Confederacy shit right next to the anarchist cookbook ever in my entire life okay do not google the last thing i just said if you don't want to be put on an fbi list do not do that you will be placed on an fbi list it's it's a uh, fucking straight up and and for good reason to be honest with you so like they, it's literally white supremacist uh, uh, breeding grounds, basically. James has got something to say about that. 